And you're watching Al Jazeera, we're bringing you the news that a journalist for Al Jazeera Network, our correspondent Shirin Abu Akhle, has been shot in the face and has died shortly afterwards. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, it happened apparently during an Israeli army raid in the Jenin town in northern West Bank. Nida Ibrahim is in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Nida, I want to ask you first of all how you and the team are reacting to the news this morning. We're here in Al Jazeera's offices in Ramallah, where if you can see the colleagues of Shireen are gathering, there are journalists also here coming. Everyone is looking at this video that shows the last moments of her life. She has been shot while she was covering the Israeli raid in Jenin. And if you will pay attention to that video, I'm not sure if you can see, but even as she was shot, and you will see someone coming in now, trying to pull her from the scene, the gunshots continued. So it was really difficult, even if she had a chance to make it, it was really difficult to pull her, to get her the help she needed. And shortly after, she succumbed to her wounds in the hospital. Nida, so one can, can understand, Look at forgive their faces. me. It's Forgive me for everything. interrupting you. One can understand, because we have heard from, um, from Stephanie, how tightly knit these teams can be, how much like a family these teams on the ground can be. Try, if you can, just talk to us what kind of impact this is having on the team. I think the pictures are speaking for themselves, right, Rob? People here have lived with her. You know, these teams go on long coverages, they spend days and days in the field, so they're like one family. We even got a message from Chirin yesterday asking us to come to Janine, where she has been based. Her producer, Wissam, who's here, he's been also a friend. They go out together. So you can see and you can sense the, the closeness of the relationship not only amongst Al Jazeera family, but also other journalists working for other networks. Because there's a feeling among Palestinian journalists that they are targeted by the Israeli forces because they are carrying the story, because they are the messenger of the Israeli violations, the attacks of what's going on. So here everyone feels that they themselves could be like Shireen. Many of them, if you ask them, they'll tell you that they've been shot by live ammunition, by rubber-coated steel bullets. Uh, they've been hit by tear gas canister. So, as these people are concerned, the aim is to prevent them from going to the field and covering. We're talking about a seasoned journalist who knew the nuances of the story, who has been well-versed. Everywhere we go as Al Jazeera English team, we, we meet people who say, oh yeah, we know Shireen, she was there. When we were covering in Jenin, in the past few weeks, people were saying that she was one of the first people to arrive after the Israeli invasion to the camp, and that marked 20 years. Uh, we marked the anniversary of uh, just a few days ago, 20 years ago, when the Israeli army invaded the camp, technically raiding the buildings there to clamp down on the Palestinian fighters. She's someone not only is seasoned and knows her story, she's also been trying to learn. She has never had enough. She wanted to learn new media. She just graduated with a diploma from Birzeit University. She was showing us her phone proudly, uh, showing us how she was editing and using those softwares to edit the phone. She was very modest for someone who was very well known, very professional. So. She was also telling us in Jenin that she was learning Hebrew. She, she was reading to us from Israeli media, the Israeli narrative. Because often, when you look at stories, there's a Palestinian narrative and there's an Israeli narrative. And it's important for Palestinians to get their voice out there. So it's important for them to know what's going on or what the Israeli media is reporting to kind of try and debunk it and say what really happened. Let me take you to her office. She's been working here. She has an office. This is the empty office of Shirin Abu Aqle. This is where she reported on the story. 
You can see a lot of honoring plaques for her from several places. This is uh, in regards to a committee defending uh, the rights of Palestinian refugees. Remember, we're just a few days from marking the 74th anniversary of Nakba, the 1948 displacement of more than 700,000 Palestinians uh, by when Israel was created. She was telling the story. For all of these decades, she has been someone you would rely on to tell you the story. She was a teacher in Birzeit University, but she was also, also a student. She really wanted to focus on the human element of the story. She was someone you would feel comfortable talking to. So I guess that's why people opened up to her, talked to her, and she was able to carry the features, the stories. So that's why we're seeing lots and lots of uh, people coming to uh, uh, the bureau. Here's Rania, who's beside herself. She also, she always would tell me, Shireen, Shireen. Uh, she, would, she would know this. Let me call Shireen before we go to Janine. I know you don't have words, and I'm sorry. But just one word for Shireen. We miss her. We miss her. We will. Everyone here has known her, has known how kind she is. You might see them now engaged in the details. Now we hear that they're going to take her body for autopsy. People here say that they want to bring her justice. They want the world to know what Palestinian journalists and Palestinians are going through. Nida, there must be questions that people like you and her colleagues ask themselves when they're faced with a situation like this about whether it's worth carrying on, whether it's worth doing this job and putting your life at risk. Can you encapsulate for us what the mood would be moving forward? Do you think that people are going to, at least some of them might say, I'm not doing this anymore? Definitely. Isn't that the goal? I can tell you, studying journalism in Birzeit University, my generation has, the generation that has been um, young during the Second Intifada, went to study journalism because of correspondence like Shirin Abu Aqle, like Jivar al Budere. They wanted to tell the world the story the way these journalists did. So when they see an idol of theirs, when they see someone who's been shot, when I see someone like her, who was just commenting on my picture yesterday, just go, just like that, how, how is that gonna affect me trying to go to Janine again, or to go to the West Bank again, or? Yeah, of course. It's, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how it's gonna affect me. I'm still processing, I'm still in shock. Everyone here is still in shock. But definitely, it's going to have an impact on you. You know what, even if we want to keep on telling the story, what about our families? Are they going to be OK with us continuing doing this story? Now, this is not to say that Palestinians are safe and journalists are the ones being targeted. We are covering our story. We are covering the story of our people, of our families. So it's not like if I'm not a journalist, I'm not going to be targeted or killed. We pass checkpoints on a daily basis. And sometimes you, you see armed Israeli soldiers uh, uh, directing their weapons at you. So you think that that is not going to affect us or like, you know, like that could happen to us. My point is that these things could happen to us. And excuse me if I'm just sometimes at loss of words. Nida, I completely understand, of course. It has only severity. happened just within the last few hours. And we do appreciate that the team still has to process, as you say, everything that, that is going on. But I do want to ask um, Nida, just finally, we've seen the pictures of Shireen's body being taken in a procession through the streets of Janine. Um, what do, and the crowds there have been very significant. What do you think the reaction on the streets is going to be to this? 
It's hard to expect how people are going to react. She's a seasoned journalist. She's been very well known, professional, has touched the hearts of many. Wherever we go, we hear that, oh, Shirin was here, oh, Shirin covered the story. And yet, from years and years ago, people in Janine are carrying her body now in honor of her, of her professionalism, of the fact that she died telling the story. Nida, thank you very much indeed. Nida Ibrahim talking to us from the occupied West Bank.